Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kessler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of S. Dave. Today's question comes to us from David Martin. He doesn't give a call sign. I need to know what would be the best setup for talking between two base stations 100 miles apart. Line of sight not possible. High terrain between the two points. Antenna requirement and what band for the most reliable year-round connection. Well, um, first of all, I would try just ordinary two meters. Uh, you'll need an external antenna like a J-pole. You could, if you want, go to a four meter or four element two meter beam which are readily available from diamond and arrow antennas and so on. You can get them through DX engineering and uh, they may give you a uh, pretty reliable. Note that the bend radius of for radio waves is uh, not the same as the radius of the earth. The, the uh, radio waves go on a four-thirds ratio. They can go a third as much longer uh, and will bend slightly to follow the line of sight. Now, if that doesn't work, your solution lies in HF. There is a mode of propagation called near vertical incident sky wave. And let me show you what that looks like. Let's take ground for the earth. And you've got a station right here. And you're going to be transmitting uh, with a low antenna. Antenna at one quarter uh, wavelength or lower. Down to one tenth wavelength, lambda's wavelength. Now, here's the ionosphere up here. And it doesn't matter what kind of uh, rugged terrain you have. The terrain could be pretty rugged around here. Because what you're going to do is transmit up straight up. That's vertical incidence. And the wave will come right back down. Near vertical incidence is when you go like this and the wave comes down over here. This is called near vertical incidence sky wave. And it works great on the low frequencies, 80 meters at night, sometimes in the morning and afternoon, 40 meters in the day, okay, and you'll get a signal here. If you try and go too far with this, it just gets absorbed and doesn't do any good. You know, it ends up like that. It's just this little spot right here that can be two to three hundred miles wide, uh, two or two th 200 to 300 miles wide and uh, you can go from near vertical so close in. This works really well like here in Colorado. You know Denver is a six hour drive from here but it's only 198 miles as the crow flies. And so I've done this near vertical incidence with on 80 meters or 20 meters you can have a couple of frequencies that you keep trying and that will work fine for you. That is probably the best way of doing it. I have to admit I'm a little bit puzzled by uh, this question because this sounds like a question that would be asked by someone who's not yet into ham radio. Um, both of those methods that I've talked to you about require an amateur radio license. Please understand that if you are transmitting and your intended recipient is 100 miles that way, like say from here to Grand Junction or something like that, which is line of sight for us. If you want to transmit to somebody who's over there, remember that your signal is going out everywhere, okay? And only a tiny, tiny fraction in the millions or billions of that power is going to get to your recipient, and that is the magic of radio. But there's no such thing as like a microwave connection that goes directly from here to there and no one else hears it. 
So uh, I would recommend make sure you've got your uh, technician license for the two meter version or you have your general or extra class license for uh, the NVIS. Um, I think NVIS would be the easiest. You may have a multiple of communications methods to get through that particular distance. I'm assuming you have a friend uh, there who, with whom you wish to speak. So there you have it. That's what I'd recommend, and I hope that helps to answer your question, Mr. David Martin. And I hope that you will subscribe to this channel and share this answer with others, because others may have the same question. So, until we next meet, 73.